So joining me now, the new Democratic nominee for the governor of Maryland and what of course progressives hope is the soon to be governor of Maryland, Ben Jealous. Ben, great to have you here and congrats on your victory last night. Thank you, Jenkins. You know, we're pretty happy, man. We're yeah. pretty happy. So, Ben, your, your victory breaks down into two parts, and I think they are equally important, and that's why we featured your race prominently on the Young Turks overall for the whole network. One was the primary, where it was a classic matchup of the progressive versus the more establishment candidate. And you come from the Bernie Sanders wing, and you were a surrogate for Sanders, come from the progressive can do wing of the party. Uh, your opponent, unfortunately, uh, came from the well. Let's not try things too much, uh, wing. Now that race is settled. I want to talk about that for a second, and then I want to talk about the really important race you have in the general election because that also uh, is really important for a different reason. But yep. let's just talk about the race that you just won. So, a lot of the Maryland politicians were on your opponent's side, uh, and they said, "Well, you're you're trying for too much change." And they imply that you didn't have enough executive experience, which I thought was a little offensive given that you led the NAACP for five years and all the other organizations that you've led. Um, but uh, how, did, how did that get settled? You know, Tell me about the dynamics of that race and why you think you won that race. Well, there's kind of two questions there, right? How did it get settled and how do we win? I mean, you know, how it ended was actually pretty good. A lot of those uh, kind of Long-standing leaders of our party had frankly called me uh, before they endorsed my opponent, um, told me that they had cut that deal two years ago, that they had no choice, and a few of them even said that they would, that they actually hoped I would win. Um, and so we, um, you know, frankly, there's we're a family here, and we know each other, we respect each other, uh, and it's it's very easy to come together at the end of this. How we won is the way that we will win again, which is that we traveled to every corner of the state and we listened to people early on. And then from that point on, we talked to people about what it would actually take to solve the real problems facing their families in real time. And we just did it again and again, talking about how we finally fully fund our public schools, talking about how we end mass incarceration and take the money that we save and use that to bring down the cost of college to young people and the cost to, of graduate school. And we talked about how we finally get our healthcare costs under control by simply doing what every other Western nation has already done. And by doing that again and again, it worked. You know, People, it doesn't matter, man, if you're in West Baltimore or Western Maryland, chances are the issues facing your family uh, are the same. I mean, there can be you know, kind of things around the edges, and there can be a big local issue, but eighty percent of the issues will be the same. What I love to dive into is the mechanics of how uh, people want, especially if they're progressives, so that the movement can learn lessons uh, and, sure. and apply it to other races. So your race was neck and neck for a long time, and and people were not sure who was going to win. Uh, and as it turned out, you won by about 10 points, which is a very comfortable margin in, in that context. So what do you think were the different things that you guys did in your campaign, uh, whether it was volunteers or how you raised money? I, I don't know, you tell me sure. what you think made a difference in, in getting that victory. Yeah, the, the decisive decision for us was to spend time very early on pulling in union after union, environmentalist group after environmentalist group, uh, big progressive organization after neighborhood progressive organization, because we knew, frankly, how to win. My campaign manager and I met when I was leading the effort to abolish the death penalty in the state, and he was managing the effort to pass the DREAM Act. And I became co-chair of that campaign too. And we won those big victories and we helped pass marriage equality. And we learned that year that the way to win in our state, quite frankly, is to get as many groups as possible to declare the motto of the three musketeers and just say all for one and one for all. And we knew from the very beginning, if we just built a bigger, more robust coalition than anybody else, we would win. Now, the risk that we took early on is I was just told straight up, look, man, if you're going to raise money for a campaign, you're basically building a bicycle. A bicycle is going to have two wheels. 
One of those are contributions that come from individuals. And frankly, they're going to tend to be rich folks and you're going to have a pretty high average donation. And the other is uh, corporate contributions. And I said, well, look, uh, I'm just willing to ride a, a unicycle. And if that means that we lose out to the bicycles, I will lose this race on that alone. As it turned out, we ended up having more individual donations than any other candidate and frankly, more individual donations than all the other candidates put together. 99.9% of our contributions came from people. The other 0.1%, the other one-tenth of 1%, actually slightly less than that, came from trade unions and small businesses. Many of those small businesses were giving things in kind, like food to the campaign from uh, busboys and poets. And uh, we shocked people because we raised money faster than anybody else, and we did it with the lowest average donation in the race. Almost half of the guy uh, running on the public option. And so we showed that you can win a Democratic primary in Maryland getting 99.9% of your money from real people. And and uh, Ben's campaign raised $3 million, which is a, an amazing total uh, when it comes from individual donations. It wouldn't be an amazing total if it was corporate PAC money, then you could raise that fairly quickly. Uh, but it was a bold and important and correct and progressive decision. Uh, to not do that, and and by the way, one of the reasons that uh, Ben Jealous got the endorsement of the Just Democrats, and it was a huge night for that organization last night, as yeah. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who was a Just Democrat from day one, the first candidate ever, and Ben Jealous won. So huge night for progressives overall. So now let's talk about your upcoming race. Um, now Larry Hogan, as things stand, uh, are is a popular governor in Maryland, uh, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, the, the second reason why your race is so important is because there is an idea out there that if you want to beat someone like Larry Hogan, you, you have to go towards the right wing and you have to be just you know uh, in the centrist camp. Um, now you're also defying that. You're, you're saying no, I'm going to run as a progressive in the general election as well. I'm not going to do any pivots, etc. So if you win doing that strategy, it will be a really important test for the progressive movement. That's why I think it's really important for all progressives watching this to make sure that you continue to support Ben because that campaign is a testing ground. It's important for all of us. So talk to me about your strategy about how to win the general election. You know, look, I've said from the very beginning, I can't zigzag because I have size 14 feet and I'll trip. (laughs) <laughs> and so, you know, we're just going to keep running in one direction. And quite honestly, it's not towards the left. It's not towards the right. It's towards the people. I come into this as the former national president of the NAACP. And I know that when I worked in states, frankly, states far more conservative than our state, to shrink their prison system more rapidly, we did it with bipartisan support. Because we listened to people and we pulled folks together. You know, we got fiscal conservatives who were just concerned the prison system was growing too rapidly. We got libertarians who, frankly, agree with us on a bunch of criminal justice issues. Now, and we got Christian con- conservatives to join with progressives, to join with the civil rights community, because frankly, they're in the prisons doing prison ministry and they understand what few folks do, which is that we don't just have the most incarcerated black and brown people on the planet. We also have the most incarcerated white people on the planet and it's destroying their families too. And quite frankly, what they tend to have in common is that those families were, were too poor to afford their own lawyer. And so um, that taught me a real lesson it, uh, when I was running the NAACP is that when you run towards the people, you can create a new center, a center founded on courage and common sense. And that's what we're doing in this race because the, quite frankly, you know, having loved ones who are addicted to heroin or to, or to pills, that's not a partisan issue, it's a people issue. Uh, struggling to pay student debt, not a partisan issue, it's a people issue. Um, worried that your kids are not getting a great education in public schools, not a partisan issue, but a people issue. Uh, word that our tax system isn't fair, that it you know, lets hedge fund managers pay a, a lower tax rate than their secretary while we have senior citizens on fixed incomes who are having their houses foreclosed on in Baltimore because they can't afford their property taxes. That's a people issue too. And so we're just going to run straight towards the people um, and we're going to have the courage to speak, frankly, common sense, put real solutions on the table. You know, Jack, one of the gifts I had in my life is that a 101-year-old Maryland social worker who helped train Barbara Mikulski also helped train me. She's my grandmother. 
And she told me again and again, baby, don't try to half solve a problem because you still got a problem. So my idea with the people of Maryland is simple. When I bring you a solution, it'll be for the whole problem. We will talk honestly about what it will take, and then we'll fight hard and we'll get it done. What I'm known for in the state, the reason I was named Marylander of the Year in 2013 by the Baltimore Sun and then endorsed by them again, quite frankly, is because I've succeeded again and again in getting big things done in our state, and that's what I'll do as governor. I wish your grandmother had talked to Barack Obama. But anyway, uh, <laughs> okay, benjealous.com is the website. Uh, really easy to remember, obviously, benjealous.com. And, and you've got the donation and the volunteer links there as well. If you're watching later on YouTube or Facebook, you will have those uh, really easy to click links down below in the description box. If you're watching live, benjealous.com as well. He's sticking with all his positions, Medicare for all, criminal justice reform, and actually funding the schools of Maryland and get them back up to where they belong. Ben Jealous, thank you so much for the great work you've done for the progressive movement and for winning that important election and for joining us on the Young Turks Network. Well, thank you, Jenk. And let me just say one quick thing. You know, I was joined here in my office by my dad who taught in Kayseri, Turkey when he was young. He's a huge fan of yours and he says hi. I say hi right back at him. Uh, great honor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ben. And thank you All to right. uh, the senior jealous as well. All right. Thank you, sir.